Welcome back to Through the Lectionary. This week we will be looking at the Gospel for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. And that text is written in Matthew's account of the Gospel, the 8th chapter, verses 23 through 27. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. A very short text, uh, but one that's uh, quite well known. It's paired this week with uh, a text from from Jonah, chapter 1. Of course, we remember the story of Jonah, how he uh, fled from the Lord to go to Tarshish because he knew that uh, God was... uh, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he simply didn't want the Ninevites to be saved, so he flees on the boat, and uh, a storm arises. Jonah is, of course, asleep in the lower part of the boat. The men wake him up to figure out what in the world's going on, and Jonah knows exactly what's going on. So he says, look, if you'll just throw me into the water, uh, everything will will go back to normal. Uh, Of course, this is not... Uh, completely what happens here, right? Jesus is indeed asleep. But when they wake him up, Jesus doesn't say, throw me in the water. He simply rebukes the the wind and uh, and the sea. And uh, there, there was a great calm. So there's, a, of course, a reason that that's paired with the Jonah text here. But I'll get into some other Old Testament accounts that are, uh, are quite helpful for this this week as well. Now, what we have seen so far in Matthew's gospel is that uh, after the temptation of Jesus in in chapter 4 and calling of the disciples, uh, Jesus preaches the Sermon on the Mount. And that takes up Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. And immediately when he is coming down the mountain, this was the gospel written for last Sunday, we get the beginning of Matthew chapter 8. Jesus cleanses a leper. He uh, heals the paralyzed servant of the centurion. And then all these people are being brought to Jesus. And he heals them over and over and over again. So he's there in Capernaum on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. So that's where he's leaving from at the beginning of this text when the, when the storm arises. But not only have the people, have especially the disciples, heard him teaching in the Sermon on the Mount. They've seen what he's capable of in healing. And they're still, obviously, with this text coming up, still obviously a little bit confused. But with this text, Jesus is making a clear distinction. He's more than a prophet. Okay? More than just a, a rabbi who teaches. More than just a prophet who may be uh, healing. He is God himself. So he gets into the boat. The disciples followed him. The great storm arises on the sea. They're being swamped by the winds and the waves. He's asleep. And they say, save us, Lord. We are perishing. Now imagine this is likely a a fishing boat. And there are quite a few men in this boat. And it doesn't take much to get a boat like that uh, rocking from side to side. So, you know, their fear... For them at this at this time might you know might be warranted. Uh, how would you feel on on the sea? But at this point they don't know who they're in the boat with. Save us, Lord, for we are perishing. Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the the important thing here for us is, as they're trying to figure this out at the very end, who or what sort of man? is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? What sort of man is this? Uh, Must be more than mere man. He must be God 
2. We have written all over the Old Testament and particularly in the Psalms. And I want to look at a few of these uh, Psalms where it talks specifically about God and specifically in this way. The first is written in Psalm 65, talking of God who stills the roaring of the seas and the roaring of the waves. Psalm 89, you rule the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, you still them. Psalm 93, mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. And then probably uh, most familiar is Psalm 107, where a couple of times it is written, For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves and the sea. And then he made the storm be still. The waves of the sea were hushed. So these are in direct reference to God himself. Only God has control over the waves and the sea. The sea is this place of great fear and of great unknown, uh, where the Leviathan uh, goes about. But, but God is the one who has control. God is the one who stills not only their fear, but, uh, but the waves and the sea. So this text is so much more than perhaps just surface level kind of basic interpretation that you get oh he'll god will calm the storms of your life it's it's more than this so much more jesus is more than a rabbi he's more than a prophet he is god for only god uh, can command the waves and the sea to be still and they are so we have a, an excellent uh, text uh, from matthew chapter 8 this week about the nature of Jesus, that he is not only true man, but he is true God. And we take comfort in this as we move forward. I hope that you have a blessed weekend. Uh, we're nearing the transfiguration of our Lord and the entrance into the season of Lent already. So uh, get ready. It, it'll be here before, before you know it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for taking a trip through the lectionary with me. Like the video, comment down below with questions, and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.